It is a member-supported Hawaii Public Radio and All Things Considered. I'm Dave Lawrence, and a really exciting uh, reca- uh, a reunion of sorts is happening right now. I'm, I'm over at the Blue Note in Waikiki, where uh, this group of gentlemen are going to be playing until Sunday night. It's Earl Clue and his band, and that means Al Turner on the bass and also band musical director, David Lee Spratley on the keyboards, Ron Otis on the drums, Tom Braxton right here with the sax and the flute, Earl Clue himself sitting next to Tom, and a real pleasure to have you guys back. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Brother Earl, great to see you in lovely purple. My general manager would like that one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, this is great. This has been a lot of fun. Um, uh, uh, This is probably the best show over the last... What when you say, David, like over the last... (laughs) <laughs> Say that again. This is the best place in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what some of the ladies were saying earlier too. I mean, how can you go wrong when you're when you're coming here? And also, I got to think right now in terms of the band, and, and certainly for yourself, the Earl Clues Weekend of Jazz is coming up really soon, right? And that has to be a very important moment. It's George Benson, David Sanborn, just some of the guests this year. Is that is something like that that you? Uh, I mean, where did uh, how did it get started? And is that something that just is, you get excited about or you get nervous about? Oh no, I'm never I'm never nervous, you know. No. No, you know, I I you know, unless something happened. But, <laughs> <laughs> which happens in life sometimes. What's that? Mountain at 80 miles. An hour. <laughs> How do you come up with the 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 cats who are going to do that? Is that like more of a management thing or do you personally say, "I want to have you reach out to them"? How do they, how do they end up on that bill? Oh, well, you know, we we've been together for for such a long time now you know it's just uh uh we have a really great band and uh uh we've been uh performing and and all over the all over the world all of these years you know and it's it's incredible you know because every time you know you think about it, it's like man you know we we went here we do this we do that the other thing you know and it's and i'm like man i yeah. Say that again, David. Make connections with people and they ask guys if they want to come do it. And he, yeah, Earl has a tremendous staff uh, head, headed by Mrs. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> and his Rolodex is probably and pretty good. No, but Denise is Mrs. Everything. Right, right. And make something like and that she, happen. Uh, Can't be too hard to make happen. She makes the rest happen. We do the music. She makes it easy for us to do the music. And, and his uh, whole band is going to end up being there, too, backing you up, I'm assuming. Yeah, you're going to be playing there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to have a, a wonderful show. You know, I'm, I'm really excited about it because we don't get a chance to, to do these type of things uh, uh, all the time, you know. So, so what we, we try, to, kind of try to, to put things together, you know, if, if, you know, from time to time, you know, we're, we're doing something or, or somebody falls out or somebody comes in, you know, but pretty much we have like a solid band it's amazing that you know a a a band like that you can 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 be that consistent over time you know and i think i'm really proud of everybody in the the band you know i i'm i'm blessed with that that is truly wonderful thing you're very blessed and you got wonderful wonderful group of guys mr atomic dog just uh, no just i just want to say too you know <laughs> well, since you said that, I gotta go. Roof. But I just want to add that these guys, are these awesome players and stuff, Earl knows them personally as well. So they're playing because Earl is there. They're coming to the weekend of jazz because he's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know. I totally it's also do. It's like a big reunion. I mean, there are people that don't miss this thing that have been there every year, yeah. and uh, everybody gets together. Everybody knows everybody. I'm talking about the fans. But then it's also great for the musicians to see everybody as well. So it's a real happening. So you're saying a lot. Uh, if I can reinterpret that, a lot of the people who come to this, they have it's such a remarkable experience. They make it sort of an annual event for themselves. Yes, some people even do the Colorado one and the, do the the one on uh, Kiowa Island. Right, right in South Carolina that that happens, uh, and that's like a fall one. So you have like a, spr- a spring and fall, right? Yeah, I was I was looking at the site. And speaking, uh, Mr. Braxton, you got the uh, the next chapter latest release, and then I hear there's a new collaborative side project. I was taking a look at some of the stuff that you've got going on. The other side, you want to give a you want to shine some light on that? 
Yeah, it's funny because I actually met Robert Sine, who's the trumpet player that we did this project together uh, at one of Earl's gigs. He he's a big yeah. fan of Earl, and we played to get uh, played in Columbus, Ohio. And he said, "Let's do this project together." And I said, "That would be great, but I really don't have time to do it." <laughs> but he kept after it, and it, it took us two years of sending tracks and doing things to uh, have some fun. And it's great playing with a trumpet player. I mean, that the sax and trumpet go way back to Diz and Charlie Parker and all the way back yeah. train and you know i mean miles so it was it was really fun to do something with another horn player when's that coming out oh it's already out that one just came out yeah, we just got that one out so. so it was released this year mm -hmm. yes okay so it's a fresh uh that's what i've seen that it, that it was coming out you know i was looking at your bio and we just had um i just had i guess we should say it was september they were here so about six months ago ewf was in town every time they come through Earth, Wind, and Fire, Verdine. Uh, I've had Verdine on the show like seven or eight times or something over the years. And I was looking at your bio and I didn't know where it plugged in. I was hoping you could explain Philip Bailey and how you got to work with the voice, as they call him. <laughs> that was interesting. It was something that myself and Kirk Whalem and Philip Bailey did in Houston years ago. We just did this show. It was a big benefit. And uh, we did some of my music, did some of Kirk Whalem's music. And Philip Bailey and I kept pinching myself because I've been, I've been an Earth Wind and Fire fan for centuries and so it was he was amazing really was just to stand next to him and hear that that tone and hear all that he can do so it was a great experience and he still got that sound too man he's just a guy is a absolute cannon when he when he steps up to the play Al um, when you're running herd over Al's a musical director and it makes me wonder what is can you kind of shed a little light sometimes you see that with bands you'll see you like um Mark Rivera from the Billy Joel band he's their musical director and and I've gotten to pick his brain a little bit about that because very different band than what you're doing but um explain a little bit of what goes into being the the MD of a band well big music to musical director I'm sorry about that you kind of just Make sure that everybody's on the same page. You know, uh, these musicians really don't need much direction because we've we've been playing together a long time, and the music is is such a a great joy to play. But usually, uh, any cues or uh, things like uh, when we start the song, making sure everybody starts the same thing. If there's an audible, if we change a song in the middle of the show or something, we make sure everybody's on page. Did I say something funny? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's it's very easy when you're working with great musicians. And, you know, uh, being a musical director can vary depending on the artist, you know. so. But Earl's music is such, such a joy to play. There's not much... Uh, that I really need to do. So the thing I was, sometimes I'm, I'm a huge James Brown fan. Sometimes I, when I've watched the classic videos of James and, I, and there would be, somebody would make a, something wrong and James, during the course of the song, would turn around and be like, you got that wrong. That'd be, that you're fine. <laughs> he would like find people. $25. <laughs> What's that? $25. Hey, look at you. Fred Wesley told me this. He used to play with the horny horns and so did Bootsy. He played bass with James, right? He, he, they always were so afraid that James was going to look at them. Because if he looked at you, it's going to cost you money. Right, right. Later on after the show, boy, you're going to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> and your MD beyond this, explain a little bit about your other MD gig, which I understand is, a, is an ongoing role. I also am the musical director for art, an artist uh, by the name of Kim. He's an R&B singer. And it's a little different in his situation. We have background singers, a much bigger band, mm -hmm. and his requirements are different. slightly different because he's a vocalist. And uh, that role can be a little challenging at times. But again, you know, we have a great band. Ron is the drummer in that band, which makes it a lot easier for me because I don't have to really think about what's happening, happening in the drum chair. But usually... You, you uh, make sure everybody's on the same page, on the stage. Uh, we put together rehearsals, uh, song lists, things of those nature. If that, you know, I mean, it, it varies from artist to artist, right. you know. 
how much response I mean, how, how much responsibility you have as the MD and how, how much you have to ride herd over just kind of like ride <laughs> through through the gig that makes sense and and also uh, and a few of you cats have had the experience of, of working with her but I see Aretha's name mentioned in in, in your thing and this is a I've seen her a few times, but once was at Madison Square Garden at the Rock Hall, 25 shows, which is incredible. She had all these different special guests. When did you get to work with, with Aretha? Share us a little bit of a, like a up close and personal Aretha. Okay. My experience with Aretha was in the recording studio. I never performed with her live for a reason, but I've... I've <laughs> <laughs> but I've played on several Aretha Franklin records her one of her sons was my best friend in elementary school she lived a few blocks uh, away when i was growing up in detroit so i've known her for many years and when i had the opportunity to record with her it was you know it was very special you know but uh she's the queen of soul for a reason you know (laughs) ron has played on her records and he's performed with her live so he can tell you a little bit about uh, about Aretha in a live situation. <laughs> and and what is, uh, share some of that with us, because certainly that would probably be how a lot of people, not everybody is, is as privileged as Al to actually been in the studio working with her, and most people who are listening probably, uh, if, they, if they have any connection to Aretha, it's either listening to the music, but it's seeing her live. Explain a little bit about getting to play with her live on stage, and maybe start by saying, how'd you get the gig? Well, to be honest with you, I think I got that gig, um, was through doing some session work with her, with Al. And um, I had this one funny story that's real funny. Gloria Estevan, uh, husband, we on the, in the middle of the show. <laughs> and her, her husband comes up on the drums and is like whacking on the cymbals. So Aretha's playing piano and she's looking at me. I said, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> See, she's looking at me and when he gets off, he falls off the drum riser. <laughs> so that was that that story to me is funny, man. But how I got started with is is definitely in the studio. And uh she is a true diva. So but it's but it's still an honor to work with a legend such as Earl Clues himself. You know, he's this guy's given me a tremendous start in my career, so I appreciate it. And also this guy too. So it's been what? Almost 30 years <laughs> of working, so. Most of your life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, you guys have a very family oriented thing, and I know what you mean. Some artists, sometimes with a level of success, they, even though they're really still good, they can become a handful to deal with. And, and I, I totally, uh, just from, as you can imagine, <laughs> right? Is that a good way to describe it? Uh, more than a handful. <laughs> I would say yes to that. <laughs> a truckload of, uh, of issues. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's something that, that kind of uh, comes with the territory, I guess you would say. Uh, and uh, Stay In Your Lane, out this year, second album. Why don't you give a plug for that? Well, yeah, yeah, this is my uh, second record, and uh, I'm proud of it. But it says Stay In Your Lane. <laughs> Is that from driving in L.A. or something? Or where does that title come from? Well, it, it, was, it was a fun title, and I just said, okay, I'll just stick with it. And just <laughs> and a little free PR. Right, right. So, yeah, I have Al is on it. and um, I couldn't get Earl this time, but hopefully the next one. Who's your, who's your favorite rock drummer? Ooh. You can name two or three if you have. I actually like, um, I like Chad Welcome from the Red Hot Chili, right. Chili Peppers. No, he's, he's a monster. Yeah. and um, Chad Smith. Chad Smith, right. And also, uh, I like Tommy. Tommy. Uh, Tommy Lee was good. I like Tommy Lee. He was solid. A guy. It's a guy. Who gets a, is underrated because it's such a showy kind of band. But it's very. It's when you go back to the earliest Motley Crue records and you hear like the uh, Shout at the Devil record. Some of those little licks that he was throwing in. They're simple, but they're just so tasty. Little tiny moves. I agree. And people are probably surprised I listened to some of that stuff, but I did. <laughs> well, it adds a lot of diversity into one's playing. So it's a. Uh, and and speaking of diversity, <laughs> where's the wine? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> where's the wine? <laughs> well, over at the table, my brother. You got something in that glass there. But uh, one of the things that uh, Ron has a very funky sound. I was listening to some of your stuff online, and and when you think about David, uh, you're gotten to work with. 
you know, besides J, we were talking about JB, the the parallel, the other half of that of that nut, if you will, would be George. Uh, there's just no question about that. And you got to not only work with him, but you helped to develop one of his signature songs. And we we were joking about Atomic Dog earlier, but it's from the later period of of his. Uh, output of original songs but it was one that got on the radio it's an enduring one for for going to see him i haven't seen him in a long time but he used to that was a, a signature part of the show talk about first getting to, together with george how you got the gig and also developing that and what, what has become the kind of song that uh, will last forever it's timeless yeah, that's for sure. it was all luck <laughs> it was all <laughs> luck I got a call from Greg Riley at the Super Disc Studio in East Detroit. And who is he? He owns. He's an engineer, uh, part owner of the studio, and I was doing uh, piano sessions, uh, mostly like country and western stuff like that, right? And he calls me, says, "Hey, Dave, I got a session for you. Uh, if you can get over here tonight, because the guy that's supposed to do it didn't miss his flight or something." So I said, "Sure, whatever. How much did it pay? You know, oh, it'll pay. It'll pay good." So I went, and. Uh, I couldn't believe when the, I met the producer, his name was Donnie Sterling, and he's wearing Funkadelic gear, okay? I mean, he has the full dreadlocks, he's got star-spangled shirts on, uh, blousy pants, you know, slippers with toes curled up, and, you know, all kinds of stuff hanging off of me. He says, hey, I'm Donnie, I'm the producer, and we need some keyboards on this track. And I said, well, can I hear it? You know, what do you, what do you want? He said, well, you, just let me know what you think. So I walked out to the piano, and the music came on, and I was amazed. So it comes I, through monitors or headphones? My headphones. And I had never, ever really played any funk before. And it just, I heard the music and it just hit a nerve in me. So I played a piano part. I said, this is kind of like what you want. He said, don't stop, don't stop, just do it, right? So after a few more overdubs and stuff, uh, he pays me in cash. And he says, thanks a lot, we're going to call you back. And I said, that's great. So and you still don't know who it's for yet? I don't know who it's for. I don't even know the name of the band. I think it's this guy, you know. So the next day I get this phone call, and it's George. And I couldn't understand a word he said. He said, I said, who's this? It's Joe Clinton. I said, who? Joe Clinton. I said, oh, uh, no, I think you might have the wrong number. And he says, no, he says, you played on my song last night. I said, oh, that was your song. Oh, okay, I want to meet you. So I said, okay, fine. So he gives me an address. It's in Southfield, which is not too far from where I was living at the time. And I go knock on his door. And he opens the apartment door, and the apartment is empty, completely empty, just carpeting. And he's wearing a sheet. He's wearing a sheet. And he has- no surprise to George fans. That or a diaper, it would all fit into the... He has, he has nothing else on. He's just got a sheet with a hole in the middle, and he draped it over his... That was his clothing. And he says, man, I love what you did. I want you to do... And, and you know, we hung out for about an hour and a half or so talking about the music and what we, he was going to try to do. He said, he's, I got this big record deal coming. I got to produce seven albums. I need tracks. I need people to play on the stuff. And you're... We want you to do it. So I said, hey, I'm your man. And uh, next thing I know, I was in the studio like every day, just cutting tracks with all of his different groups. You know, he had Parlette, he had Brides of Funkenstein, he had Sweat Band, Bootsy, and Funkadelic and Parliament. So I was busy. Cutting tracks for all of them because they were all sort of mingled together. One day in January back in 1983, it was snowing one night, 6 o'clock at night on a Sunday night, and I pulled up to United Sound, which is another. That's Aretha Studio. Mm-hmm. By the way, I play with Aretha, too. Well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it was a snowy night, and I had no idea what I was going to do. And I go in the studio, Mike Acapelli was the engineer. I says, man, you know, uh, let's... Uh, let's uh, throw the man in the box on the tape. You know, man in the box me was a rolling drum machine. Back then, the drum machines weren't programmable yet, okay? There was even many, there was no MIDI yet, which is M-I-D-I, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And there was no technology yet. So we said, well, this is so boring. Let's just flip the tape over and do it backwards. And that was the beginning of the song. And the rest of the song just came out of me. I was done in like four hours. And then George <laughs> <laughs> oh man. and then the chaos really starts <laughs> when when george rolls in he was shocked he couldn't believe the music he couldn't believe it and uh i think it was he was also because he had 
but he was like pretty pretty stoned he was <laughs> pretty i mean more than normal more than normal so and so we gary scheider the other guy co-writer with me and george on the song we both stood on either side of george and held him in front of the microphone because he was so stoned he kept moving away and swinging and being dizzy and stuff you know and he just started saying these lyrics which you know business though Gary Scheider, man, Cosmic Slop, the guy, looking down on us for, for sure. And did you get to know Ber Bernie during those years, too? Bernie is. On the live show, I got to play with him, and that's where I learned a lot of my funk stuff, watching him. He's a genius, a prodigy. May, may he rest in peace. Yeah, no doubt. I got to spend like an hour sitting there interviewing him one time in New Jersey. I'll never forget it as long as I live. But Bernie, uh, Bernie Worrell is uh, And Gary, they're both... Uh, Real heavy guys. Um, Earl, as we go to wrap it up, uh, you got a wonderful group of guys. I love hanging with you guys and, and really special uh, vibe. And they can, you can feel the love they have for you. You can see it when, when you watch them on stage. Just one, one final question. Your latest album, The hand, Handpicked, you haven't done anything since then that you're sneaking out or maybe you got it in the studio, but that's a, Handpicked is still the one that's commercially available. Local artist is on there. Is also a, a good friend of mine, uh, Jake Shimabukuro, and guy's got a huge heart. We just did a benefit for homeless uh, to try to help. We have a huge homeless epi epidemic here in Hawaii, the worst in the United States. And Jake came to the studio, did a we did a show for about seventy five people, raised uh, almost ten grand for uh, the homeless crisis. And I was looking at the record and, and listening. Uh, how did it end up? If you can, you guys are covering this classic from the Eagles Hotel California. And, and just if you can, just share some memories of uh, getting to work with Jake, who's uh, our, our hometown hero. Oh, yeah. But the, Jake is, is one of my uh, uh, best friends. You know, he's, he's a great, great guy. And uh, uh, he, what, what do I want to tell you? He's he's I, he gets a kick out of me, and I don't know why. Because you know I, you know I'm playing my guitar, and he, you know, and from time to time, you know, we were, uh, you know, we we did a uh, a little thing in the studio, and and I really enjoyed uh, uh, what he was doing because you know I, you know, it, it's it's like a lot of times, you know, you everybody has a different way of, of playing, and uh, uh, Jake was just, you know, I was just fascinated by the way that he plays because it seemed like uh you know it seemed like it wouldn't go that way you know like uh you know on you know and so it was frustrating so we sat there for another hour and then then i then he finally started telling me about some things that that i could do if if we put it together you know we did a couple things pretty nice so you know i mean so i i, I love that yeah you yeah, know yeah yeah, he's a special guy. Sorry about that. He's a he's a very uh, and and diverse guy. He can fit into just about any. I mean, he can shred on stage with, with a metal band, or he can kick back. I mean, he really can. I mean, guys from Megadeth that he's hanging with and stuff. Uh, he's he's a, a one of a kind uh, musician. Um, well, it was a pleasure getting to, to talk with you guys. I love it that you're back in town. I hope that you make this a, a regular part of, of your life and that you'll, you'll come through. Yeah. Say again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we would like that a lot. <laughs> it's great to come here. It really is. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful to ha have you guys back. And uh, it's uh, the Earl Clue and the band through Sunday at the Blue Note in Waikiki. And a great pleasure to have time with all you guys again. Thank you so much for, for taking a little bit of time with me. Great to see you, David. Our pleasure, definitely. Ron, you stay safe, brother. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good plug there. Al, God bless you, man. God bless you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Sunny day. It's, it's wonderful. Wonderful to have you here. Uh, big time. Thanks, brother. Thank you, Dave. It's always a pleasure to see you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to see you, too. Nine CDs. <laughs> Earl, stay safe, and thank you. I really do appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. This was really a lot of fun. Really glad talking to you. You're the man. God bless you.